Welcome to Seek Week, night four here uh, at Seek Week, Holy Week. What an awesome week it's been. Uh, so glad to have you tonight. I have been so blessed, Pastor, by this week, the conversations that we have have had with people, the testimonies that we've heard, uh, and I'm just excited about what God is going to do tonight. Thank Amen. you so much for tuning in. We hope that you're blessed tonight. And Pastor, how are you today? Man, doing fantastic, just enjoying this lovely weather and just, just glad to be alive, brother. Amen. It's a beautiful day. Uh, we were both kind of discussing how the week has, has caught up with us, but, you know, when you really stop and think about, I think about that old hymn that says, count your blessings, name them one by one. Yes, sir. If we yes, begin sir. to do that, in spite of everything, we begin to see exactly how blessed we are. We're going to so start true. the evening tonight uh, with a little bit of worship. If we can tune our hearts, our minds uh, to engage in worship for just a second, we're going to turn it over to Becky in Jesus' name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass, whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name and sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship his holy name. You're rich in love, you're slow to. We're so glad to see you tonight here with us. Thank you for taking the time to log in and join us this week of Seek Week uh, as we examine some of the names of God. 
Tonight we're going to be looking at Jehovah Shalom. Maybe you're familiar with the term shalom. We know that it's a Jewish or a Hebrew word particularly that means peace. Uh, technically it's not just peace, it means wholeness, soundness, prosperity. It means uh, integrity. And so when we, when we think about this particular story, uh, it's in the book of Judges chapter 6. Gideon is called by God to deal with a perennial enemy of the people of Israel. It's the Midianites. They, they're, they're a tormenting foe that comes in every time they grow a few crops. Then the soldiers will come in and steal their grain or uh, steal their, their, the, the animals that they're growing. And so the people are frustrated, but yet they're under the, the strength uh, of an iron-fisted enemy. And so the story opens with this judge by the name of Gideon, who was by no means um, a mighty warrior when his story began. As a matter of fact, he was over hiding in a wine press threshing wheat, which is not where you do it. You do you thresh wheat out in the open so that the wind can blow the chaff away. Wow. But he's hiding down in a wine press trying to thresh enough wheat to make some bread for his family. And the angel of the Lord appears to him and says, Hail, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon basically says, you, you talking to me? And so the, the story opens with the angel of the Lord commissioning him saying, you will go and take Midian as one man. The angel of the Lord gave him a message. He says, after Gideon perceived he was the angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. I'll come back to that. Wow. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. Jehovah Shalom. Now think about this. When we began this week, we looked in Exodus chapter 17 where Moses built an altar after a battle took place and he called it Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is our victor. The Lord is our banner, our banner of victory over us. It's very different with this story because before the battle ever ensued, uh, Gideon had a word from the Lord. Now, how many of you know when you're going to go in a battle, it's good to have an angel show up and say you're not going to die? Amen. That, that'll give any, anybody some faith. Amen? Amen. And so he chooses to build an altar in that spot to say, okay, God, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to build this altar. Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. You're going to bring pre peace in the middle of this outrageous situation with the enemy. And of course, he, he went on to actually defeat an army of multiple tens of thousands of people with only 300 men. A lot of details, I don't have time to tell the story, but 300 men who actually had no weapons. They had a trumpet in one hand and a, and a pitcher or a jug with a candle in it in the other. And so they come sounding the horns and they crash the horn against the pitcher and the lights come on or the candle shines and the Midianite army is so confused by what's happening, they're thinking if they've got this many trumpeters and this many folks carrying torches, the size of the army must be outrageous. Wow. And so the wow. enemy got fooled. God brought peace. The Midianites were self-slaughtered. And that's the story where the name Jehovah Shalom came from. Now, what's significant about that is that it's a picture of Jesus. Isaiah 9 says his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Amen. We move to the New Testament. The scripture says that he is our peace. He has torn down the wall of enmity, the wall of partition between Jew and Gentile. He came and reconciled God to man, man to God. The scripture says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. I love that. One of my favorite scriptures is in Isaiah 26. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. As I close this this evening and we get ready to uh, hear a testimony from our sister, we'll be taking some prayer requests later. A number of you have been battling with worry and with stress and with a lot of fear. There's been a fog of fear that's been hanging over our nation. There's been a very a lot of fear mongering by the media and uh, just just things that have been uh, planted a seed of, of pure terror in the hearts of believers 
we are not in any way suggesting that we back off of what we're supposed to be doing, washing our hands and keeping the, the physical distance six feet between folks. We're almost at that here. We're very careful here in this room. But as we meet together tonight, we want you to know that we'll stand with you in prayer and that God can give you victory. You, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Finally, the scripture says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything. One translation says, Don't be anxious about anything. Pray about everything. Amen. Uh, King James says, be anxious for nothing but by but everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. So Jesus is our peace. He will bring wholeness and soundness and blessing, integrity in your thinking, into your life if you'll just put your trust in him. Amen. 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 Good. Love these love these teaching moments. Uh, what an honor it is to get so much in such a short period of time to get so much taught. Thank you. I love those teaching moments. Thank you, Pastor. And, and I love the promises of God. I love that the scriptures uh, are already there before we even get there. And I'm comforted just knowing, uh, man, that we really can lean into God in these times uh, and that he truly is our peace. And tell us a little bit about this awesome guest that we have with us. Introduce her. And then I've got a couple of good questions for you, too. So. Absolutely wonderful lady over here in the chair um, is in management with Walmart and it, that in itself is a ministry in our community uh, Carol heads up our frontline prayer ministry uh, has a couple of wonderful ministries to some of the ladies in the church um, with a couple of small groups that she's led uh, actually more than two but a number of number of groups over the years and is just a great source of support and encouragement. Mm. She's prayed for me, prayed for us as a team. Amen. Um, has been here, gosh, I don't want to estimate how many, but I know it's at least been a decade uh, just in walking with us and being on team with us here at Victory. So, Carol, we are thrilled to have you with us today. Amen. Amen. I know that Pastor Michael uh, asked you to share a little bit of your testimony, so I'm just going to open it up. You start with what you feel led to, but it's so good to have you with us tonight. Shalom, Alakim. <laughs> Shalom. Peace be, with you. Peace be with you. And also so with you. you. <laughs> uh, well, I, um, Pastor Michael said, I just am excited to be on team here at Victory. I feel like God drew me here for a purpose. Um he said, I'm in management at Walmart. I am a supervisor. I've been at the West Memphis Walmart for over 26 years. So, and I've been in retail my entire life since 16. Um, the Frontline Prayer Ministry, where we, you can text your prayer request in, and we have a team that prays for, for those um, requests. Um, just the women's ministry. Um, just wherever God would have me go. Hey Amen. You know, you, you, you have been throughout my time here, uh, which is almost 10 years, but you have been so consistent. Uh, tell me a little bit about what drives your faith. I mean, I know your testimony is so strong, but what is it? What is it that, uh, the, the, what was that changing moment where God really just showed up in your life? You're like, wow, like this truly is real. Like this idea that, that we talk about, it's not just an idea, but this walking it out with God is a very real thing. Well, you know, um, like the scripture says, too much is given, much is required. And I know who I was before Christ and what he has brought me from and what he has me pointed to. And just, um, just the testimony about peace. I was so excited. I don't know if you could tell it, Pastor, when you asked me and you said what the topic was going to be, how excited I was. I don't know if you could tell that through the phone. Well, I, I prayed for a couple of days for over all of them, and you came to me when I was thinking about peace. So that, that's the reason. Amen. Well, my entire life I have been very anxious and had a lot of strife in my life, battled depression. Um, so when you have that inner turmoil 
uh, growing up and going into adulthood, it spills over into your relationships where you have a life of strife. And not long after I started um, coming to Victory, a friend of mine had given me a gift card to Lifeway. And I was looking around, and there was a book. It was called One Perfect Word by Debbie McCollum. McCollum, McCollum anyway, look it up. <laughs> but what it was is she was telling how instead of a New Year's resolution, pick a word for the year. And there's been a lot of talk about this lately, a focus word. Right. But this has been some years ago. And she said to, to pray about what you need in your life, what you're lacking, what you need to work on. And I needed peace. I needed peace in my life. I needed peace to be in my children's lives. I was so tired of strife. So my word was peace. So I started searching the scripture and writing down words about peace. And if you didn't know, peace is in the Bible, in certain translations, even more than fear not. Wow. Because if you don't have any peace, you're going to be fearful. And through digging in the scriptures, I'd never really studied the fruit of the Spirit. But I started studying the fruit of the Spirit. And love, you have to have love before you can walk in any of the other parts of the fruit. It's like that Jesus puts the seed of love in your life. So when you have that seed of love in your life, then you can experience some joy. That's great, Carol, yeah. When you experience some joy with the love of Christ, then you can experience some peace. Mm, wow. And it carries over through all of the rest of the aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, which we all have, but we have to learn to walk in each one of those things. And once you get a little taste of one of, of the fruit, you don't want to live without it. Right, right. It tastes pretty good, doesn't it? It tastes it good. It tastes good. And if somebody wants to take your fruit away from you, you slap their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So if you don't mind, I'd like to share a little bit of the scripture. I brought my cards. Absolutely. Because She's I would, ready. I would dig into the scripture, and I would write those scriptures down. and I love it. That's how you do it right there. Yeah. Meditate on it. Because you have to get it down in you. When you have get the opportunity to be tested on what you believe, if you have it down in you, then you'll be able to experience it. So when I have started getting the peace scripture in me, when those times of strife would come up, I would and breathe out and just thank you, Lord, that you are the breath in my lungs. You are the peace that I have. The first scripture that really did it for me was John 14, 27. Yes, good one. Good one. Peace I leave with you. Yes. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let, neither let them be afraid. And what struck me in that was not only does he leave us peace, he left us peace. And he was given these, um, you know, to the disciples, mm -hmm. you know, before his crucifixion there that he did, he's not going to just leave us peace. But he says, I'll leave you my peace. Wow. The yeah. peace yeah. of Christ. And he is in us. So just like Jesus said, to the storm and the waves. Peace, be still. So when strife starts rising up in me, Good. I speak it out verbally out of my mouth. I say, peace, be still. Speak to the storm. There you go. You speak to it. Yeah. In the NLT, that same scripture says it a little bit different. I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled and afraid. Wow. 
So he gives us that peace of mind and the peace of heart. So when I started living out those scriptures and, you know, just these last few weeks, we've all had the opportunity sure. to not have peace, to be afraid. I was always a what if person. You know, I would even think out conversations that never happened. You know, what I would say if somebody else said, if they say this, I'm going to say this. So I was just always tied up in my head. So, but when the peace of God comes in your life, and like I said, you get a little taste of it, you don't have time for the strife. You don't have time for just the unrest and just to, like Paula said last night, to get out of your own way and give it to God and let him take care of it because he can take care of it better than than you can any day. What's the, what's the relationship in maintaining this peace and your thoughts? You have to take those, just like the scripture says, you have to take those thoughts captive because they will creep back in. Um, you know, we have some of, you know, the way God made us. We, he made us individually, and some of us are thinkers, and we think too much sometimes. <laughs> so, I'm one of those people, so I get it. I understand. And the more you think and you let those negative thoughts, it's like a weed, get in your brain, and it starts growing. And if you don't pluck it out and replace it with the thoughts of God, then you just get deeper and deeper and you have to get a bigger lawnmower. It's crazy how much energy comes with that. When you get into that flow and you're like running in that track and w whatever kind of negative pattern of thinking that you're in, mm -hmm. and you've got to arrest that. You, 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 you quoted a great scripture. Uh, what is it? Second, Second Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations mm -hmm. yes. and every high thing which exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So I've got to take that thought and make it obey Jesus. No, I'm not going to have it tied up. Yeah, and I speak, it out. I speak it out. I, I, you know, I'm past the worrying whether people think I'm crazy or not. <laughs> because my, my peace of mind and my heart and is, is worth more to me than what anybody else thinks of me. So when those thoughts come in, I talk to it. I talk to it. And you have no place. And then I... Am I? You know. You made a comment about living it out. You know, it, it seems that that's a recurring theme when when we're talking about adversity or anxiety or depression. And really, uh, there's a turning point where the scripture, and I made a comment similar to this last night, but where it becomes real. Uh, and I, I sense that that's exactly what happened. Uh, I want to shift gears just for a second. It's still related, but you and I have had a lot of conversation about counseling. You have... Yes a passion uh, kind of like myself mm. for counseling how does how does your own personal experience uh, and what God has shown you how did that motivate you to begin counseling others uh, because I know you've done some coursework uh, I think specifically for women's counseling yes, uh, yes. so how, did, how was all that tied in together well I just what I went through different things in in my life um, it was the Holy Spirit and God that brought me through it. I did not have godly people in my life to direct me. Um, so when I got to the other side of some of those issues and got set free from some things, the Lord just dropped it in and it's like, what you've gone through, I'm going to use that to set other women free. That's powerful. Um, you would be surprised how many women um, that are going through different things in their life that maybe they didn't choose, um, don't even know how to put gas in their car, wow. you know, don't know, well, how do I go get insurance? What do I need to do? Either through divorce or death of, of a spouse, you know, they don't know how do I apply for a credit card? Maybe they've never had a credit card in their name. Um, 
and that's just some practical things aside from the mental part that you're going through. Um, but, you know, God has led me through um, so much in my life. And like I said, he's brought me to the other side of it to get some freedom in some things. Wow. And just um, to have somebody to sit down or call and just to be able to say, hey, this is what I'm feeling. And just like when there's a car wreck and somebody's witnessed it, you don't want to hear a third person what happened. You want to talk to somebody that was there and went through it and say, this is how I got through it. And to be able to pray with somebody and just listen. Reminds me of the little wow. little child, the, the the parent. I think the mom said, you know, you can always pray to the Holy Spirit. You know, he's he's there with you. And the little little kid said, Mama, sometimes I need Jesus with skin on. Right. <laughs> in other words, you need somebody that's sitting there in your presence, in your face, and can talk to you. And so, yes, it's always wonderful to be able to have somebody. What did Peter call it? Those of like precious faith. Mm -hmm. And if they've been through it, then they can comfort us out of their experience. Mm -hmm. That's produced some hope in them. Amen. You know, it, it, it is really revealing, this conversation, uh, because, you know, we are, as Christians it, who've been walking with the Lord any time, I think we always feel confident about our salvation. But the peace of God, as you can see through counseling, I, I know many people who have been saved just through counseling of my own, but they're still dealing with baggage, if you will, that is 10, 15, 20 years old. So uh, I think it's important with this dialogue about peace uh, to understand that, you know, as Christians, our salvation can be secure, but the peace of God, which yes. does surpass all uh, understanding, it's something that we still uh, need to, to seek and ask for on a yeah. daily basis. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I don't want to take too much time, but you mentioned this about our salvation being secure, but then not having the peace of God. I think there's a distinction between peace with God, which is salvation. Amen. We've been reconciled. We've been justified. And the peace of God. Yes. And so what we're talking about here tonight is the peace of God. That's God awesome. giving us that overwhelming sense of it's kind of a spiritual poise. It's a calm in the middle of the storm. The storm may not still. But you can be calm in the middle of it. Yes. Amen. Love that. Anything else that uh, God put on your heart that you wanted to share with us? I know that you uh, are a, a person of depth, uh, and we're so grateful just as leadership here at Victory to have you on this team. Uh, she serves every Sunday when we're in service, uh, running the Fresh Start table and just making an impact in the lives of the people. So on behalf of the staff here, we Amen. just want to thank you for serving uh, and serving so consistently all these years. But Amen. is there anything else you want to leave us with, a nugget of wisdom, anything that, that you just want to get out there? Well, just that, you know, this too is going to pass. Yes. It's going to pass. And just to reach out to those that maybe you haven't heard from because – you know, in this uncertain time, and so many people are, are not in the peace of God right now. They're uh, just going through so much. And the isolation, me, you, you know, you, you say you don't believe it, but I am an introvert. I love my alone time, and um, I put up with people sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. You know, but there are some people that... The isolation is crippling for them. Yes. So reach out because it's real easy for depression to take over when we're not among our good Christian friends and our church friends. Reach out. I just encourage people to reach out to somebody. Call them. Send them a text. Just say, I'm thinking about you. That's great, Carol. Because um, it's just real easy to slip down that slope back into the pit sometimes. 
Pastor, are you getting any prayer requests? Um, I'm getting a lot of affirmation and confirmation of the word that Carol is bringing here. I don't have any prayer requests that have come through, uh, but if you're watching and you're out there and you want to, uh, you want us to pray for you or pray over someone, please, you got a moment just to comment on that, but you're getting some amazing feedback. You got some fans out there, uh, and I know that they, they feel your heart, and that's yes. what it's all about. I think you're one of those people that... that you can feel uh, the presence of God, and that's been a huge blessing, not only to Pastor Michael and myself, but to this entire church. Yes. And we want to encourage you. <laughs> if you're dealing with uh, maybe some of the issues that we've talked about tonight, you know that uh, Pastor Michael did a great job of breaking it down with the peace of God and the peace with God, but maybe, maybe you need a little bit more peace in your life. We want to encourage you. Lift it up to him tonight and believe believe in faith that when you pray that God is listening amen so Pastor Michael uh, as these prayer requests come in I'm going to monitor these I don't know Miss Carol did you want to pray for us first as we begin the night as we pray for peace Amen. oh Father God we just thank you Lord we thank you for the sunshine you gave us today Father yes. we thank you for the protection of those last night uh, around the Harrisburg area Father with the tornado Lord and and just the uh, tornado that was in Jonesboro a couple weeks ago Lord we thank you that there was no loss of life Father God and Lord I just fall before your throne of grace right now Father Lord, I know there's someone out there right now, Lord, that is living in fear. Yes. They have no peace in their life. Yes, Lord. Father God, they're looking at the circumstances around and what if, what if I can't find the toilet paper? What if I can't get the package of beans? Mm -hmm. What are my kids going to do, Father? Lord, just... Holy Spirit, I just pray right now that you just flood their life, flood yes, their Lord. heart. Yes. Let them feel you. Let them tangibly feel you around them, Yes, Lord, Lord. and just let them know that they're going to get through this, Lord. And Father, just for those that have, have, have family members that live far away, Father God, and uh, maybe dealing with a loss of job, Lord, just... Uh, um, Lord, maybe they're in a hospital, Lord. Maybe a loved one is in the hospital and you don't know if you'll see them again, Father. Lord, just the peace and the comfort that, that you supply, Father God. Lord, I just pray that they will give it to you, Lord, and that they can experience just the peace that you provide, Father God. And, and Lord, just... Lord, if they're feeling like that everything around them is closing in, Lord, and there is no hope, Father God, I just pray that they will reach out to someone. And, Father, I pray that ears will be tuned to what people are saying or maybe yes. what they're not saying, Father God. Lord, just that they will reach out to someone. Lord, and... and there's just too many people that are perishing for lack of hope, Father, and lack of peace, Lord God. Lord, I just pray that um, my Christian brothers and sisters, Lord, will have the heart and just the ears to hear people in their desperation, Lord. And Father, I thank you for the peace that you've brought into my life, Father, and just the little bit of hope that I can push into somebody else's life to let them see that you can make it through, Lord. And yes. life may not be what you thought it was going to be, but you've got a plan and something better waiting for them on the other side of it. It's in Christ's name. Amen. Monitoring what's coming in, a lot of amens and a lot of cool comments here. Brad Johnson says, God fidence. Not confidence, but Godfidence. That's I love good. that. That's the first. Uh, just saying thank you for being there, saying so good and amen, and we're getting a lot of amen. So what an awesome, awesome confirmation that God is good, and we do say amen. So be it. In the name of Jesus, amen. we got a couple of more minutes. You can see a number on your screen there. If you uh, 
have a prayer request or if you made a fresh start tonight or would like to talk to someone about salvation, you can see the number right there on your screen or shoot us an email at info at victorywired.com. Uh, keep in mind that you can pray right where you are. And if we don't get an opportunity as a pastoral team here tonight to pray for you, keep in mind you can lift these prayer requests up in your own home. Yes. And we encourage you to do that. Amen. Pastor, did you want to pray for us tonight? Yes. yes. I'm sorry. Can I say one more thing? Sure. sure. If there's anybody that needs to talk, <laughs> just needs somebody to listen to, just reach out to the church. If you want to talk to me, just reach out to the church and let them know. That's great, Carol. And we'll get in contact, and we'll have, after all this is over, we'll have a cup of coffee and just sit down and talk. I love, love it. That. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Anything? Come here. Nothing specific. Okay, let's pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. Thank you that you are the spirit of peace. Jesus, thank you that you're our prince of peace. We just ask you to inhabit the praises of your people tonight as we lift up our worship to you. Father, we ask you in Jesus' name to, to do even what the, the writer of 1 John says, perfect love casts out fear. Fear and anxiety have no place in us, no worry. We choose to walk in peace. We ask you, Lord, that as we go tonight, that Jehovah Shalom, the God who brings wholeness and soundness and integrity and prosperity and blessing into our lives will fill us up and fill every member of our family and fill up our homes, Lord, that you would cause, I remember, I Right in that moment, I, I, I remembered the plaque that hung on the bedroom where my younger brother Dewey and I, we had twin beds in a bedroom, and there was a plaque up on the right side of the wall between closets, and it says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him to deliver them. Know that the angel of the Lord will surround you and bring peace, even as he spoke to Gideon. That's the promise of God to you tonight. Claim that in faith. In the name of Jesus, everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in tonight to Seek Week. Night four this week is flying by, but I've been deeply blessed. We hope that you have as well. Uh, we want to remind you tomorrow for Good Friday that we will be taking communion. You can do that right in your own home. As Pastor Michael mentioned yesterday, you can use bread or Cheez-Its or... <laughs> <laughs> if you got a Trisket cracker, whatever it is, we know that if you do it in faith, amen, if you do it in faith. That's good. That sacred sacrament that we'll take tomorrow. We want to encourage you, don't forget, do it with your families. Bring the kids around. It's going to be a special time of worship tomorrow night for Good Friday as we partake yes. in communion. Any final thoughts, Pastor? No, just so thankful that God is on the throne and he's not threatened in any way at all that's going on. He's not surprised at what's happening. And I promise you he's going to bring us through it and bless us on the other side of this. Bless us in the middle of it and on the other Ooh, side of it. Amen. I've received that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carol, for being with us uh, tonight. And we will see you again tomorrow at 630. Be blessed. Be blessed.